I'd like to invite any children, uh, anybody who's feeling kind of childlike, to join me at the front very enthusiastically. Thank you. Awesome. It was the Lego, right? No, no, that was excellent. I really appreciate that. A cartwheel's not really necessary, I don't think. No, it's okay. It's okay. Yeah, we're good. We're good. Listen, um, you guys are often really lucky because um, most Sundays, come on down. Most Sundays, um, you get to leave before everyone else has to sit through, you know, long-winded talking and stuff and, and good morning. And, uh, uh, and stories that we read from the Bible, uh, which is great, don't get me wrong, very important. It's just sometimes those stories are really kind of, again, sort of long-winded and they're not very interesting or they're kind of complicated and they're just really hard to kind of get a handle on. So sometimes I think it's really important to make sure that we share our stories from the big instruction book for loving everyone. But this story is a little bit different. Like you might know this story already, but it's a little bit different. It's a little bit diff- this version's a little bit different. So bear with me here. It's going to be a story. It's still long-winded and boring, but, you know, we'll get there. Thank you. Me too. David. David was different than his brothers. He had seven brothers, and they were all older. They were big and strong, and they liked to eat whole cows, listen to rock music, and beat up trees. They thought that made them tough. But David thought it was just an unhealthy lifestyle. He tried really hard to love his brothers because they were really different from him. You see, David liked to take care of animals, especially the sheep, because they were his friends and not because they were delicious, as you might expect. He didn't eat meat. He only ate vegetables and fruit because they were good for you, lots of vitamin A and C. And David played classical music on his harp, and he was kind to everyone. And everything. Most importantly for our story today, David was little. His brothers were big. They made fun of him and they called him names like tiny, animal lover, and vegetable eater. You see, their names were not very creative. They weren't very good at the name calling thing. And when he played his harp, they blasted ACDC out of their stereos. Ask your parents. Or actually at this point, ask your grandparents probably. David was an Israelite, you see, and he believed that God was always with him, inspiring him and supporting him. He knew that even though he was small, God loved him just as he was, and he was always the best he could be. His dad, Jesse, was a buddy of the king of the Israelites, a big man named Saul. So when the Israelites' worst enemy, the Philistines, came looking for a fight, Saul called up his army, including all of Jesse's sons, except David, because David was too little. But he came anyway. Now, this was a long, long time ago. And in those days, when two armies met to fight, they'd line up across from each other, sizing each other up. Instead of everyone fighting, each side could choose a champion. And those two would fight each other to decide who was the winner. That way, the armies wouldn't get their armor dirty dirty or muss their hair. Or get killed. Well, the Philistines had a particularly ferocious champion... He was a big, mean bully named Goliath, and everyone was afraid of Goliath. He was twice as tall as everyone else, twice as wide, too. He was stronger than a John Deere tractor, faster than a bolt of lightning, and smelled like a camel's breath if the camel had just eaten rotten eggs and sauerkraut washed down with sour milk. Very bad. Very bad. He carried a giant spear made from a single oak tree and a sword that he called Steve. Nobody knew why, but nobody was going to ask him either because everyone was afraid. The ground shook when he walked, and people got out of his way. Saul could smell Goliath coming even before the Philistines announced he was their champion. And Saul was scared. He didn't want to face Goliath, so he called Jesse, and he said, I just had my hair done. You fight him. But Jesse said, yeah, thanks for the offer, but I don't think so. I'll ask my boys. And he called them and he said, so the king and I are both feeling a little under the weather and we need someone to fight Goliath. Who wants to? Jesse's sons were really afraid of Goliath, but they didn't want to admit it. So they made up excuses like my armor's at the repair shop and I just did my nails. I'll do it. 
It was David. I'll fight Goliath. All his brothers laughed. His dad tried not to and smiled at him. That's good of you to offer, David, but you're just too little. I'm not, said David. I can do it. I'm not afraid. I have a plan. His dad sighed. You should stick with your sheep, said one of his brothers, and they all laughed again. Maybe you should eat an apple, said another. An apple a day keeps Goliath away. And they all laughed some more. I can do it, said David. And his brothers laughed even more. Stop it, said King Saul. He looked at the brothers and at David. At least David's brave enough to try. Thank you, David. I wish I was brave as you. Go and fight Goliath. Jesse and the boys were surprised. But they knew not to question the king. What do you need, David? The king said. We'll find you a helmet and some armor and a sword. I don't need any of that, said David. I just need my lunch. And he grabbed his lunch bag and he headed out to face Goliath. When Goliath saw David, he laughed harder than David's brothers. What's this, said Goliath? Vegetable boy? This is who you send? I'll squash you like a squash. I'll mash you like a potato. I'll bean you like a, like a bean. You see, like all bullies, Goliath's name calling wasn't very creative. Come at me, bro, said David. And as Goliath stomped towards him, David opened his lunch bag and pulled out a banana. Goliath stopped in his tracks. What? You got time for a snack, little man? Bananas are an excellent source of vitamins and potassium, replied David. Goliath started towards him again. David quickly peeled the banana and ate it, but not so quickly as to cause indigestion. He tossed the banana peel on the ground in front of Goliath. Goliath tried to stop, but it was too late. He slipped on the banana peel and crashed to the ground. David rushed forward and pulled off Goliath's helmet. He reached into his lunch bag and pulled out a large beet and smacked Goliath on the head with it. Beets are an excellent source of fiber, he said as he did it. All the Israelites cheered, even David's brothers. His mom and dad cheered loudest of all. Yay for David, they all said. The bravest of them all. David kind of gave an aw shucks and picked up the banana peel off the ground. It's important to not litter. I'm going to put this in the composter, he said. King Saul asked David, how come you're so brave? Because being brave isn't about being big or strong or fast, said David. It's about believing in yourself and doing the right thing. God always wants us to do that, and God will always take care of us when we do. Everyone was amazed at what David said. They remembered it, too, when David grew up, because David later became the greatest king of all the Israelites. The end. Well, actually, really just the beginning for David. You see, the thing is, we sometimes think that it's all about power and like like physical strength and size and and like what we have and really what it's about is what we have inside it's about spirit and God knows that that's why later God chose David to be king is because knowing that God is with us is the thing that inspires us and strengthens us the most you probably know that story a little differently do you Yeah, yeah. Thing is, we know all the stories, sometimes a little bit differently, and sometimes we tell them a little bit differently. But if we're telling what's at the heart of the story, that's the important piece, isn't it? And what we learn from the story, whether we learn this version or somebody else telling the story, the important thing to learn is that God is with us. And that God empowers us and strengthens us and helps us understand that we're good and we're great just as we are. Can I get an amen up in here? Can I get an amen up in here? Just want to make sure they're still awake, you know. That's...